Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Matt here today out in the cold. Hopefully you can hear me okay through the wind, but I'm here just gathering some drop data for uh, two of my rifles. The CZ457 with the uh, relatively newer IBI barrel on it that I got in the fall. Don't have any winter data for it, so I figured I'd start today. And on the other bench over there, I also have my Voodoo, which obviously I got in the summer. So I also don't have any uh, winter drop data for these two rifles. So I figured I'd just kind of walk it out. It is not ideal conditions for any sort of, sort of group testing. It's quite windy, but I can't be too picky with, uh, you know, my availability. I have to kind of take what's given to me in terms of weather. And uh, you might hear that I'm starting to slur my words because it's cold and I can't feel my mouth anymore. It's about, you know, minus 10. Um, but perfect day to gather some cold weather drop data. I do have my uh, magneto speed on. Actually, let me just take the camera off. I will be running my magneto speed, obviously, to get my velocities as I do uh, the testing for both these rifles. And I made this homemade uh, Arca Rail clamp magneto speed mount so I can shoot my full string of shots uh, with the magneto speed on to get a lot of velocity data and it doesn't touch the barrel um, so it won't affect the uh, barrel harmonics or point of impact or anything like that. In terms of targets, uh, well let's start with the ammo. In terms of the ammo we'll be testing three today. SK rifle match which uh, I find performs very poorly in the cold, so I just kind of want to see how this is doing today. And then I have a long range match and Lapua Center X. I've left these two uh, boxes open out in the cold to kind of acclimatize them as I set up here. And in terms of targets, we have uh, three distances, a board at 50, a board at 100, and then those bar boards down there are at 200 and 18 yards approximately. So we're just gonna kind of walk it out. I'm gonna make sure they're zeroed at 50 and uh, we'll see how the groups turn out, but it is quite gusty today. And you can probably hear that in the audio, but I thought I'd kind of turn the cameras on here and show you my setup. So we're gonna start with the CZ457. And again, this isn't gonna be a video comparing the rifles in terms of accuracy, especially not on a day like today. Uh, more or less, we're just gathering drop data so I actually had to turn off all the cameras for a bit. It was super gusty for a second, like huge winds coming head on. Uh, so I had to put the cameras away so nothing got damaged. But I shot 15 rounds at 50 yards with uh, CZ457 starting with long range match. And the SDs weren't great. The first shot was really high for some reason. Um, so I'll have to see. Uh, SD was 17 with an average velocity of 1067, which is quite good in the winter, especially in these temperatures. I like to see my, my uh, velocities, you know, 1050 at the lowest is what I like to shoot matches with. So it's good this is above that. Sometimes when the temperature gets really low, uh, like rifle match uh, shoots below a thousand in this temperature. So it's really not great, but uh, I'm gonna go and walk it out to hundred here. I'm gonna start a new string uh, on my magneto speed. I'm gonna start a new series just because that first one, I, I'm, I'm wondering if it was just kind of a an outlier. So we're gonna go to 100. My dope is two yards according to uh, Strelock. And we'll do, uh, well, I only have nine pasters out there, although I have more in the car, um, but I'm not sure how much I wanna walk back and forth today. So I might just do maybe two groups for today. Again, we're I'm more concerned about just getting my drop data. I do have a match coming this Saturday and the weather looks brutal. I think it's supposed to be a minus 27, which uh, at that point it hurts to be outside. Like any exposed skin actually really hurts. So it'll be interesting to see how we deal with that. Maybe we'll have to rotate shooting stages and waiting in our cars or something like that. So we'll see. All right, let's do a hundred yards here. Uh, I, I lazed it. It's actually 98.5 when I placed that target board out. So, all right, here we go. I'm gonna hold about three, maybe half a mil for wind at, to start. Oh, I did not have to hold that much wind. I'm gonna hold no wind now. So the wind actually looks like it's a right to left, so I was very wrong on that wind call. So the group was actually pretty good considering the conditions at 100 yards. 
And the SD is way better with those 10 shots fired, SD of five and average is 1055. So I'll shoot another group here. So that's a two inch paster. I believe it's a two inch sticker, two and a half inch maybe, but that group is uh, probably about an inch and a half. Uh, which isn't too bad again considering the conditions today and my Drop data seems to be right on the group is nicely centered at 98 and a half Which uh, it told me to hold two mils. So after my 14 shots at 100 yards, you can see my SD is 8.6 Which is great Especially in this cold weather. I find SDs open up. So anything under 10 is is pretty good average is 1050 So again just hovering around what I would consider acceptable or what I like to see anyway, although it is really hard to uh, hold your velocities in such cold temperatures. Let's go out to 218 yards. Hold is going to be 8.7. So we'll go ahead and dial 8.7. That's 8.7. Oh, I need to reload, that might help. So as I'm loading my mag here, I thought I'd just kind of give some updates. Uh, I had some plans to do a lot more videos over the holidays, but I just got really busy with work, it was insane. And uh, after work, I'm just exhausted, so I didn't really feel like making videos. I did get out to shoot a bit, but dragging out the cameras, especially in the winter, is quite difficult. Um, but I have some more tabletop style videos that I have planned talking about this rifle, you know, doing an overview as well as the Voodoo, um, talking about the Skypod and some other things I've been testing for the CRPS, uh, which I just never really showed in detail. Uh, as I mentioned before, I do have a match coming up this Saturday, which is a, a club level RPS match, which is basically a NRL 22 style. And it's going to be very, very cold. But what's more interesting is after the five stage RPS match in the morning, we have a, a little bit of a new thing uh, Thomas, our match director, is testing. Um, it's kind of unaffiliated to Canadian Rimfire Precision Series or the RPS. Um, it's going to be kind of just our own club level a mini CRPS style match. We're going to be using this range up to 220 yards. So it's going to be like a mid mid range uh, match in terms of distances because obviously we're limited to 220 and it's going to be another five stages. But instead of just 100 yards and inwards like RPS or NRL 22, it's going to use the full distance and be a really good kind of practice type match for people who want to shoot the larger style matches like um, Canadian Rimfire Precision Series and the Northern Rimfire Series. Uh, it's going to use the same set of rules as CRPS. So unlike RPS where you're only allowed one bag, um, you can use tripod for rear support and a pump below and things like that. So it's going to use the the CRPS rule set which is really cool and be a really good practice uh, practice grounds for people who want to practice towards the larger matches and in other news we also have a new series here in Canada starting out in the west I believe it's called long range steel slayers or something like that it's a bit of a corny name but it's uh, I believe part of the PRS series as well like the northern rimfire series but it's out west for those provinces there because a lot of guys out there wanted to know if they would have a northern rimfire series but the NRS is specific to the Ontario region and Adam Cool is doing a great job um, with the PRS and uh, I actually bought PRS rimfire membership for 2022 so my standings will kind of go on that leaderboard uh, which I think will be really good I had a really good NRS season last year in 2021 i ended up uh, fifth or sixth overall uh, in the ontario shooters uh, for canada i guess which was pretty good but i was shooting quite well i was placing top 10 quite regularly which i was really happy with so hopefully 2022 i can uh, continue to shoot well um but anyway back to my dope gathering Still very consistent velocities. My standard deviation with 19 shots right now is 8.6. In terms of where I'm hitting on the board, it's really hard for me to see, especially with kind of like this overcast in the sky. There's not much contrast on the board there. I should have used my really large splatter targets, but I'll just put 10 rounds on the same target to get a good group size. I do see a few impacts on the board. The group is not spectacular from what I can see right now anyway. Uh, and it looks to be low by maybe about three tenths of a mil. SK long range match from the CZ457 here. 30 shots in my string. SD is 7.7, .7, which is really good. Average 1052. So 
Uh, I might be running this ammo for the match on Saturday. Uh, again, this was shot at 50, 100, and 218 yards. And I'm going to do the same thing now with Center X. I'm going to start, I don't know why I'm showing this box. Uh, I'm going to start a new series here, obviously. And uh, we're going to start with 50, walk it out to 100, and then 218 with Center X. So let me just put this down. Uh, this Center X lot is new. Actually, I haven't shot much Center X in the past at all. I did a couple, couple sessions. <laughs> can't speak. I've done a couple sessions, uh, you know, with uh, Center X. I bought like a brick of it before, but it's quite expensive ammo. It's quite premium Lapua stuff. Well, it's actually the cheapest Lapua rimfire ammo, but if you consider SK Lapua, which it is, it is quite premium stuff, but it's not as expensive as Midas Plus and Exact but I would still consider Center X quite premium. So we'll shoot maybe two groups of this at 50. If it was a calmer day, uh, better conditions for doing group testing to see what the, the rifle is capable of, I would shoot more groups. But since today, I just want to verify my drop data. I'm not going to just waste ammo and money shooting, uh, shooting bad groups in the wind. That doesn't make much sense. So let's go back to 50. Adjust my parallax. Make sure my magneto speed is set up correctly. There's nothing more frustrating than shooting a bunch of rounds and realizing your magneto speed uh, wasn't reset. <laughs> no idea where that shot went. I think it's low. Yeah, they're low. Makes sense. The uh, the velocities are substantially slower than the long range match, so they're shooting about two tenths of a mil lower. But I'll just finish the group. So the average velocity is 1030. Uh, my first three shots were quite low. They were like uh, 10, 10. Uh, st standard deviation right now is 12.8, but I only have five shots in the string, obviously, so that's not very indicative of the lot at the moment. But I'm gonna bring up my scope two clicks and shoot another group at 50 yards. Oh dang, that's a really nice group. Slightly to the left, but elevation is perfect now. Standard deviation has dropped below 10. It's sitting at 9.9. .9. Average velocity is still 1030. So it looks like 1030 is gonna be the average. But again, my, my difference in zero for these two ammo types is two tenths of a mil. And I have to come up for center X, which is slower which kind of makes sense. There is no one else at the range. There must be like, you know, whatever, 30 benches or something, and I'm the only one <laughs> at the range right now. I guess this shows how ridiculously cold it is. And for those of you who don't know, if you're shooting ammo like this and you have to change your your zero for one to the another, instead of actually changing the, the, the turret or, you know, having to keep that difference in your head, you can actually set a zero offset in Strelock, so mine's negative two tenths of a mil because I have to bring it two tenths up, uh, and I don't have a zero offset for long range match because that's what this rifle is zeroed for currently. For 98.5 yards, which is 2.3, so it's actually a 2.1 hold, um, but I, because of that 0.2 offset, I actually have to dial 2.3. So we're gonna now shoot. Uh, 100 yards and maybe we'll do two groups of five rounds at 100 and that will bring our shot string for my my chronograph series up to 20 rounds uh, which is a good amount of data for uh, what i like to see anyway I, I usually do 20 rounds minimum for velocity data when i use it in my ballistics calculators i use i usually like to have more which is kind of why I really like this magneto speed mount I made that does, doesn't touch the barrel because I can do a whole series of testing like this and get a nice large string of shots for my ballistics calculator. We have uh, 25 shots in the series now. And again, this is for Center X. We have nine as our standard deviation and average is again holding around 1030. So let's walk it out to 218 yards. So 218 yards, it's telling me to dial 9.3. So the actual elevation I'm dialing in for this is 9.1. Again, keeping in mind that zero offset. Um, 
So we'll do 9. Point, it was a little bit low for long range match, so I'm actually going to do 9.5. So two tenths higher than what my calculator is telling me. And uh, we will do maybe two groups of five, something like that. I need to do some jumping jacks to get my circulation going because it is freezing. All right, just to recap the center X and the CZ 457 out to 218 yards. I see a few hits through my scope. Uh, elevation looks half decent, or I should say accurate uh, in terms of what the calculator gave me, but I did add two tenths of a mil to the drop. Our group is not stellar, um, but we'll have to take a closer look when we get up there. Uh, I just put 10 rounds on one target. So we have 35 shots. Our ending standard deviation is 9.5, so under 10 I'm happy with, especially in the cold. And my average now is 1027, which, uh, you know, around 1030 is lower than what I like to see. The uh, magneto speed mount, it's very DIY, but there's an arc mount here. Um, I just used a an angled aluminum piece, and I'm using the Picatinny mount for the magneto speed bayonet. And this stack is how I adjust the height for my different chassis. So I know going from the ACC to the Whiskey 3, I have to add quite a few spacers to bring the uh, bayonet up so it's the proper height for the, uh, the Voodoo. This is the spacer stack I need for the Voodoo and the Whiskey 3. <laughs> so I, I actually just added this block of wood. I think what I'll do to really refine my sort of uh, homemade magneto speed mount system here is I'll just have a specific block or a spacer block for each of my chassis and I'll label it. So instead of having to deal with different spacer stacks and whatnot, I'll just have a block for each chassis that's labeled. So it's just a quick swap over. I um, mean, you know, all I have to do is take out these two screws, put the new spacer in it, and then uh, reattach the two screws. So it's not horrible, it just takes a minute or two. Um, but I think if I had to dedicate a block for like my Bravo, my Whiskey 3, and my ACC, it'd be even faster and more efficient to swap these between rifles. Mounting it onto the rifle is quite simple. I just leave the strap here, by the way, because sometimes I still use the barrel strap on some of my rifles that don't have an arca rail. Um, but this just goes to the front. And I check the alignment still just in case because I wouldn't want to shoot the bayonet. But I can, I can already tell just by looking at it, it's perfect, obviously. Uh, it is quite uh, quite stable. I mean, it does vibrate a bit, but because I'm using an angled piece of aluminum and it's not just a flat, uh, flat bar, it's actually quite rigid. So that's pretty cool. And it's straight, everything looks good. And I might do a video specifically talking about Voodoo magazines because there's a lot of uh, opinions floating out there and I do get questions about the Voodoo magazines quite often if they are if they suck or, you know, if they're okay. And uh, I think there's a few misconceptions about Voodoo magazines as well. But that's for another video. The benefit of the Ear Pro right now is actually just keeping my ears warm. <laughs> Uh, first 10 shots here, standard deviation is 10.6, average of 10.63. I'm gonna shoot one more group at 50. So uh, I know just based on what I just did with my CZ, going out to 98.5 yards is gonna be a two mil hold. But since I'm about one or two clicks low at 50, I'm gonna just dial 2.1. And we we'll jump straight to that. Second group I just shot right now at 98 yards, whatever, 100 yards, uh, is really nice. It looks to be maybe about a one inch group. Uh, that's five rounds. The first group I shot, I put 10 rounds down. So I know when I shot the CZ to center up my groupings at 218 yards, uh, I had to bring it up three clicks from what the calculator was telling me of 8.7 mils. But since I look more centered and the velocity is slightly higher on the Voodoo at the moment, I'm just gonna dial 8.7 and shoot, shoot the group and we'll see how centered it is. All 
Okay, so 10 rounds fired at 218 yards. I do see the group. It is slightly low by about the same, three or four tenths low. We ended up with 40 shots in our series. The SD is 10.4 and average is 1070. So not bad. All right, so let's reset this and go to center X. Uh, that's not center X, that's long range match. Center X, it's an empty box. All right, I have three loaded mags and we're shooting Lapua Center X. I did change the camera angle just to kind of keep it fresh. <laughs> and uh, we'll start back at 50. Something that's interesting is what I notice about my Minox. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's really interesting. So I was wondering why I could feel clicks. I'll turn this camera on to show you. I thought it was my parallax adjustment knob that was clicking in the cold, or I could feel like the mechanism inside. But if I turn on this camera here, uh, again, I've mentioned this in other videos before, but being in a climate like Canada here, or my region of Canada here, where we deal with such extreme temperatures in the winter and the summer, our gear gets subject is subjected to a lot different conditions than you know people that live in more mild climates so it has to work in all these different conditions and some people may never face the issues that we we have in our products just because you know you're not doing things in the same temperatures but look at this i just noticed this uh as i turn my parallax oh it's not doing it anymore did you see that um it was actually moving the illumination knob along with the parallax. You can see it's changing the settings. <laughs> it's changing the illumination settings as I just rotate the parallax adjustment. Okay. So when only the parallax turns, it's smooth. When it's when the illumination knob is coming for the ride, that's when I feel the clicks because the illumination has settings that click over. All right, it's not doing it anymore. I must have broken the contact of whatever was binding my illumination to the parallax. I'm only touching the parallax knob. I'm not grabbing both of them. And I thought it was the parallax mechanism I was feeling, um, but it was actually just this was binding with the parallax adjustment. And you can see it does move a little bit at the same time at the moment. But after I play with this a little bit, it seems to have freed it up, which is quite interesting. But you can see there, it does want to grab it a little bit. Oh, you see that? Clicked a few over. Anyway, it doesn't really bother me. I don't even have batteries in the scope because I don't use the illumination. All right, new series for Center X. Starting at 50 yards. So the first three groups with Center X look pretty good. SD of 10, 10.1, average velocity of 1048. So I took a quick break uh, to change up targets. And we're gonna go back to the 100 yard with the Center X. And uh, we're gonna dial 2.2, which is uh, including a 0.2 offset again between the long range and center X. So we're actually dialed two mils for the 100 yards, which is technically 98.5. So the first group is pretty good, about an inch and a quarter. Elevation's actually pretty spot on. Two on the bullseye, two below, and one above. So we're gonna keep it here at two mils. Second group is very good, one inch. Uh, all favoring slightly low, but touching the bullseye, so we can come up maybe one click. Uh, as, when we went up there to change targets, I put up some bigger splatter targets, because I was just shooting on white paper before, and it was really hard to see the, uh, the impacts. Um, but for 218, we're doing nine point, so it's a 9.1 uh, 
um, but plus two for the offset, so 9.3. But since we've been favoring low, I'm going to go ahead and dial 9.5 for 218 with center X. And we'll start with the 10 round group. Uh, and I will use a splatter target just so I can hopefully see it a better. Oh, and the parallax and illumination are sticking together again, which is kind of funny. The first two shots at 218 yards are within probably half an inch of each other. Very well centered, just right of the bullseye. So that's probably the best group we've shot at 218 all day. Little recap, we have 40 shots on the string now. Standard deviation, standard deviation is 9.2 and average velocity hasn't changed, 1048. But that group we just punched at 218 is really quite nice. Um, so it looks like Center X is doing really well in the voodoo. All right, so I'm out here reviewing my targets. This is the 50 yard target. The first row here is long range match out of the CZ 457. You can see the first two groups here aren't fantastic, but this group is really good. So um, the wind was a factor though. It was quite windy when I started shooting. The second row here is Center X out of the CZ 457. Similar groupings at first, and then again, another tight group. So it looks like uh, we'll have to revisit this, revisit this in better conditions. The third row here is long range match out of the Voodoo. Uh, similar groupings, honestly, to the CZ 457. I think that's just what we can expect today. Um, but with the Center X groups, these three here, they're all really quite tight. So you can see Center X is shooting out of the Voodoo quite well. So I'm reviewing my 100 yard target here. Uh, I did do a target swap halfway through. So this board here is what I had up first. The first row here is long range match out of the CZ. The first two shots I shot here, um, I adjusted for, so this isn't really part of the group. Uh, these stickers are all two inches, so you can see that here. The first uh, group, second group, uh, that is not around. That's an old staple. Um, and then the third group, I only had four rounds left. But you can see, uh, just judging from the two inch sticker, they're probably all about an inch and a half groups. These two, groups here are the center X out of the CZ 457 so pretty similar to the the long range match honestly at 100 yards in these conditions anyway again keep in mind today I'm not doing group testing I just want to verify my job data uh, as it's quite gusty the next two groups are long range match from the voodoo 10 rounds long range match from the voodoo same thing here this is a really nice group probably just about an inch five rounds the next three groups here are Center X from the Voodoo that shot very well in comparison to the other groups today at 100 yards. So five rounds, probably about an inch and a quarter or so. Five rounds, probably shy of an inch. Again, these are two inch stickers. And another five rounds with a really good vertical spread there. Uh, and then just to show you, I did five rounds of rifle match out of the Voodoo afterwards and just see how horrible this vertical spread is uh, really not happy with rifle match in the winter that's probably about a three inch vertical spread for my five round group here with a rifle match out of the voodoo at 100 yards okay reviewing the 218 yard targets here the first target here was long range match you can see it was favoring low uh, again i don't want to really critique the group sizes today but it's probably about six inches judging from this two inch circle um, but it was favoring low so i brought it back up and shot another group uh, which you can see elevation wise is basically perfect now five shots again long range match out of the cz 457 then i did center x which gave me a much larger group it's probably about a seven inch group uh center x from the cz 457 but you can see the elevation is basically um, even so that's fine then I went to long range match out of the voodoo 10 shots 2 4 6 8 10 so all 10 shots are here this round is uh, the other group so this looks to be the group for our long range match out of the voodoo but you can see it was probably about I would say four tenths low so I had to bring that up 
and then we went to uh, I put some splatter targets up afterwards because I was having a really hard time spotting on those blank sheets. But this was the best group at 218 yards. This is Center X. You can see uh, it's probably about a four inch group. Nice group here. Uh, this is again Center X out of the Voodoo. And then just to revisit long range match out of the Voodoo was this again favoring low like the other group. Um, but this was uh, I believe eight rounds maybe. And then this is the rifle match group. Again, uh, I was shooting rifle match just for my own interest sake, but really not doing too hot compared to the other group sizes. I mean, that's probably what, like a eight, nine inch spread vertically, which is just all due to the, the velocity. It's nowhere near as tight as the Center X and long range match out of the Voodoo. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, bringing you along to the range today just doing some drop verification for the well for everything but there is a match coming on Saturday I hope to see you guys there for those of you who usually show up to the matches here at Stitzville Ranges it will be very cold so dress appropriately and definitely bring uh, you know a, a neck gaiter or something to cover up the face because exposed skin when it's minus 27 outside is no fun you can very easily get like frostbite which just sucks uh, so uh, and bring hand warmers and whatnot. I usually wear liners. Um, you know, I'll shoot with my liners on, um, but I'll put my hands in some big mitts when I'm not actually shooting to just keep them warm and then I'll take them out for the stages. But practice at home shooting with uh, gloves on. If you plan to shoot with liners on, practice at home because safety is number one. And if you're not used to rifle manipulation with covered hands, you can potentially have you know some safety violation in ND worst case scenario so get used to that especially if you're going to be shooting in winter or more you want to make sure that you're you're safe because that's obviously number one priority but anyway thanks for watching everyone um, more content to come shortly when I have time I'll see you guys in the next video take care cheers